Thanks for joining me from the Sonic Temple Festival in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Lou Brutus. Johannes Eckerstrom from Avatar is my guest. It's always nice to see you. Always good to see you, Lou. How are you? I'm really good, and I'm very excited. Today, you have actually released a live concert video recorded in Paris. Give me the particulars. Well, I was, uh, for many years, I didn't see the point for us to do a live album at all. Like, I, I don't know. I, you know, the purple made made in Japan, right? And I think it kind of peaked there. But what happened now with the whole journey that has been Avatar Country, that of course was us, you know, setting out to after having written tragedy upon tragedy, and which we will probably continue to do, decided to make a comedy, decided to unveil the truth of our king and open the borders, and all these things we did. What this album and this cycle really ended up being about is uh, our relationship to our fans, our audience. Uh, so it really started with because you know we released the first video for the album completely unannounced, and it was this whole weird thing. Hey, look, we have a king now, and that, and people were on board just like that immediately. And when we wanted to make our film, and there was a Kickstarter project, people were on board just like that. People have just been, you know, embracing all the crazy things we wanted to do, and been really supportive and wanting us to really be ourselves. So so much of what the second half of this cycle ended up being about is this is our gratitude to people letting us be ourselves basically and we felt like a live album is would be a great way to document that relationship of uh, we have with with the people with, that are that are into avatar and uh, you know to have an album where you also can hear them now you could have done this anywhere you would have liked to why paris and why the particular venue well, it was at the Download Festival in Paris, and uh, it was one of the bigger shows that summer. And on top of that, uh, as far as Europe goes, uh, France in general and Paris in particular were one of the first places where it really, really started happened, to yeah, yeah really happen for us. One of the our you know sometimes there are a couple of times in in your career where you have a show that feels like a turning point or a tour. Or a show at a particular tour, mm. and we opened Five and Sevenfold in 2013 in Paris, and something just clicked between us and the audience there. Something about our development reached a certain peak at the, at its time there, as well as just yeah, some, there was just some special chemistry there, and uh, and since, since ever since, France has been one of the places that has been uh, leading the way for us. So it felt like a good good place for that reason. Then. A festival of that magnitude is also very international. People travel to that one, and you, what you are, what we are aiming for, at least, and I think people do when doing something like this, would be to have a global audience as close as possible to one. How much uh, of the success in Paris do you think is due to the fact that it is such a mecca for Western civilization and art? Do you think that's maybe one of the baseline reasons why they took to you so well? Well, obviously, the French have a great understanding of good culture <laughs> and and food. And nice fermented things in general, <laughs> such as Avatar. Excellent. Johannes Eckerstrom from Avatar is my guest. We are backstage at the Sonic Temple Festival in Columbus, Ohio. Do another segment? Sorry, you're my first today, so I'm still That's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, don't worry about it. You're good. Uh, we'll talk movie and then tour. All right. Okay. And it was a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter? I'm so sorry. Kickstarter. Yeah, Kickstarter. Uh, sorry. Who's the one that's in trouble? That's going bankrupt. What's that? The one that did not go uh, belly up. Was it GoFundMe that went belly up? No, it was, a, it was like specifically a band one. Well, they, they took Neil, Neil There's Anderson, one called Neil Pledge Anderson Music Brutal. or something like that. Pledge Music? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, what a fucking disaster. Okay. Well, how many of those pages do you need? Right. Hey, I'm Lou Brutus with more from backstage at the Sonic Temple Festival in Columbus, Ohio with Johannes from Avatar. Tell me the, uh, the road to the film because you started... Uh, sort of a DIY campaign and it yeah. rolled really well. Yeah, well, 
thing is, with Avatar Country, the album came a very grand vision of everything around it. And very cinematic, so it yeah, seemed natural. Exactly. And what we usually do or, you know, budget for and have time for to do are those, you know, three videos per album. It has been like that for, for a couple now. Uh, but this time already when being in a studio recording it, we had our, our man U1 that we have done, you know, since years done yeah. the videos with. Uh, we sat down with him in the studio and make, made an outline for the story, how to cover all the songs, all of the album. And then we filmed three of them, and then we ran out of money. <laughs> or money to make videos with. Sure. I, and like I said in the campaign video, I, I did not have a golden Ferrari to sell. So, so it was just on a very straightforward, honest premise of, we want to make this because we want to see it. And if you want, want to see it too, you can help us. Uh, realize that vision and uh, as, and people did and it is one of the weirdest things I think that I have experienced because so we tripled the goal within 24 hours and we are we were and are extremely happy and grateful for that but it was also honestly overwhelming because as far as as far as you we think about I think about the business side of the music business which you have to yeah uh, I like the f it's a very kind of basic simple formula that feel uh, very straightforward when it comes to hey we co we are coming to your town and we're gonna sing and dance and play and if you want to see that you can pay a ticket and uh, hope you have a good time and if we didn't suck you might come back next time yeah it's a, it's a very straightforward. yeah exactly and on your on the way out you might buy, buy a t-shirt yeah and it's really like for this you're gonna get that and by and the way the t-shirts is where all the money is but please continue true. <laughs> true yes we Napster was already dead when we released our first <laughs> album that's how far into the deep end we were yeah. <laughs> that's uh, so no so and that is pretty straightforward and then it's you know then you don't have to overanalyze what that actually means uh, so much. But when people do this, you know, support a Kickstarter campaign like this, they give you money for something that doesn't exist that you then are supposed to deliver and they don't do it. Like they invest in something, not really to see, in order to see a monetary return, you know, it's not like buying stock in something. Yeah. They, are, they are investing out of love. And it's this very strange crossroad where love and people having faith in you you know is is in a crossroads with with finances and it's still something uh, that i from time to time try to process uh what exactly that means and all every time the only thing i ever I, the, the thing i come back to all the time is just gratitude because it, it really shows that to these this handful of people that uh, helped us make this happen now must really really appreciate what we are doing and what we have done up until now must have played up some kind of role in their lives and it's uh, it's huge and it's not a huge thing that's communicated through money which makes it weird because it feels dirty without it actually being sure. dirty at all yeah. it's pr yeah. actually kind of beautiful it's all very natural and wholesome really yeah but uh, with cash involved which makes it like very you know money hard. always you know, there's a great song, Money Changes Everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. It, it's weird. I'm trying to process it, but through it all, it's all it's all about gratitude. I would be curious, are you able to track where the um, investments, where the donations came from? Yeah, and, yeah, because and, and, we sent and, and, out the rewards for them and all that. Sure. So, so, so can, can you give me, like, a basic idea, the breakdown of how many countries and where you saw the most from? Uh, most from the U.S. and... Uh, <laughs> Yay, <laughs> us! Uh, second uh, would be uh, Europe at large, obviously, and I think uh, I would—I don't remember exactly now, but I think France was high on that list. UK was high on yeah. that list. Um, well, yeah, Belgium for sure. Uh, I don't remember the exact order. Sure, but uh, United States is—you guys are cheating because you're a big country. Your states are part of the same country, <laughs> so more, more or less. Yeah, so it's Th things are a little weird right now. But. It's debatable, yeah, at this point, but. You know, as far as your constitution says, you're all one country. Well, so it becomes a very big place. Yeah. I don't know which state that uh, had the most. I would have to give a guess to either Wisconsin or Texas. But that's just a gut feeling. I don't have the numbers for that. I have a book coming out next year. And it's been a hell of a thing trying to remember stuff 
from 20, 30 years ago. You've been smart about all this. You and the rest of Avatar keep journals and you keep some sort of spreadsheet. Tell me how you keep track of everything because you do a lot. Yeah, no, what, what we do and we have done it since way back when, like I mean around the time of us put, putting out our first demo. Right. Uh, we had a section in our, on our old homepage that were for, wow, it's windy, past shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we would keep, you know, we would keep some tiny notes on what happened. It was some equivalent of a battle of the bands. We lost next year. We won and whatever, <laughs> you know. And we kept that going for a few years on the homepage. Then with a redesign with it, we removed it. But we kept it, uh, we kept the log for ourselves. So now we have, you know, in Google Drive, this spreadsheet that keeps track on every single show we have made. And we try to, at the end of each tour, now we have some catching up to do actually, right. but trying to have some notes on at least most of the dates. And it can really be like crappy Thai food uh, went to the bank, but it's some, just something that then hopefully sparks other memories around it. Because now when I say those two things, I see the rest of it. How I walked back to the venue yeah. and the entrance was there, up there. Yeah, the guy from the label were there. We talked about the hot sauce. Ah, yeah. yeah. You know, so it all, all, it all comes back to you like that. So we're trying to do that. Can you ever see um, either individually or collectively uh, a book or a series of books or a, a coffee table book with posters and set lists and artwork and memories and all that? Well, one version of that will come out now in an extremely limited edition for as a Kickstarter reward. But uh, that will be a huge rarity in a couple of years, I guess, because they're because that is promised to the I'm guys that backed that. us. I'm yeah, in yeah, on that. yeah, yeah. You need to talk to the few backers who went for that reward. Yeah, because that's yeah. extremely limited. But it, it's kind of one of those things. I'm very glad we get to do something that cool for those people specifically. Yeah. At the same time, I'm looking at it like, oh, this is, this is being, this is kind of nice, you know. Yeah. And we start adding some biography and for going a bit deeper into the background of the band, the forming of the band, and all these things. Well, well, and also that's the kind of thing I think you could probably take sketches and preliminary artwork and th there's got to be a million things in sheafs someplace you know that someplace i'm sure yeah and but th this is full of stuff directly related to uh to the to, to the, the film and the show. Yeah. Oh, oh i see okay so but still we put added in a lot of the band's background and where we came from got how it. we grew up and how we formed and all that so we're kind of doing that but almost no one in this world we're going to get that book <laughs> and so what we see in the future like i don't know we're we're touring with uh, Damon Townsend right now. Yeah. Uh, which is yeah, which is crazy cool. I'm a big, big fan since ever. Uh, and it's an interesting matchup too. It's a it's an interesting, a great matchup. I thought it was you know crazy and awesome the idea that he would go on before us. I didn't really put into you know I didn't really count with the, the fact that that meant that we would have to go on after him. <laughs> <laughs> We hey, we're headlining! Oh crap, we're headlining! <laughs> we done one show this far, uh, and it's been great. <laughs> uh, kind of daunting test. I'm a very big fan of him, and you know, specifically in the context of being in the same dressing room, he hearing him warm up, and he go. <laughs> but no, but he I, I, he was talking about you know he he put out a book a couple of years yeah. ago, and like how this you know, delusional grandeur of self-importance, whatever you call it, that goes into writing a book, why I am great by me. <laughs> uh, and I have that kind of view on it, that it would be, at some point I would love to put something on words about the history of the band, I guess, yeah. in a grander scale. Uh, it feels early now. Yeah. But one day, sure. Good. But I mean, we already, I already wrote a book uh, for the album, that, The Fable. Yeah. So you got that book. You know, one and it's more probably more self biograph. It's probably more biographical. Biographical. Biographical, yeah. yeah. Or autobiographical. Uh, autobiographical yeah. than people realize, and that I realize. So you can read that. What one other idea with uh, sort of keeping track of all your adventures? Uh, I like to call them spinal tapian moments. If there were one that you thought, well, that's got to go in a book, out of all of the things that have happened with the band and all of the touring, what is the most spinal tapian thing you've had happen? Well, if 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 you other if, than if everything, I, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say if you get me going now, probably if I think for a bit, there will be plenty. You know, there are those yeah. shows where the strobe wouldn't stop for the whole show. <laughs> uh, so this 
thank you. We are Avatar. You know, uh, that happened. Um, no seizures, I hope. Yeah, no. That's no joke, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> so we used to have this uh, little round, almost looked like one of those things uh, elephants have to uh, balance on in circuses that torture animals and fucking suck. Yeah. Uh, we used to have one of those on stage to, for people to, you know, rest, instead of monitors to rest their feet right. on and me yeah. to stand on and all that. And we'd have this little kabuki drop that looked like a shower curtain and start with me coming out of that. Yeah. I would be beginning out the show. Then once we were deep into touring like crazy, prob probably towards the end of the touring cycle for Feathers and Flesh. So very much Groundhog Day. Yeah. And like, ah, screw it, let's put Jonas in there instead. Ha! -ha! And that particular day, it wouldn't drop. Of you know, and he's supposed to start the song. It was open, it will let us die, so it's him first. Yeah. So you have the intro, and ba -ba, and nothing happens. And nothing happens and nothing happens and then it's time to start playing this song and he has to do 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 climbing out do, 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 you know getting out, out out of the drop like that so that was and that is literally like the, sto the scene when they're coming out of the cocoons in Spinal Tap so it was exactly that then uh, F file that under living the fucking dream yeah and th th there's some then we had oh first European festival first time yeah, first time we did a festival outside of Sweden, many, many years ago. And I ditched uh, my cousin's wedding for this. That whole band was invited to, for that matter. And we ditched it to, to go to a first festival uh, in Slovenia. It's a great festival, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's called Metal Meat nowadays. It was Metal Camp back in the day, I think. Right. Uh, so we had Pyro and given instructions. So this Pyro takes from down there and he didn't know shit. <laughs> So uh, the time was off on everything, including that it was this, you know, this kind of when it rains, sparks things yeah. went off while I was talking between two songs, stuff like that. And what it, did that cost you, by the way? <laughs> the stupid thing is that we, we paid him. I don't remember the price, but he got all, all of the money. Up. You know, get half up front and then that wasn't very good. Here's the rest of the money. I don't know why we did that. Uh, but, you know, a couple of thousand of euros. So a couple of thousand of dollars, but pyro is expensive. Although Slovenian pyro sounds like at least a good instrumental to tie two other songs together. <laughs> I'm just saying, file it away for later. That's actually, yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, but so, so, you know, that was one of those things. Good. Then you have this final, t oh, uh, Jonas uh, almost concussed, uh, the king almost concussed Henrik once on stage in Glasgow. Uh, Henrik had a fever and his back was all messed up and he, he was real bad to begin with. Well, that's the guy you want to beat on then. Yeah, and he was, you know, we're standing next to each other and Henrik holding basically was going to go like this, you know. Jonas next to him is going like this. Oh! Bam! In the eye. We saw the whole rainbow aligned. And he, he fainted, he got knocked out. And he fell into me. And I kind of start pushing, pushing him up. He wakes up. Yeah, kept going, but yeah, he he he, he rock and roll. Out. So so, you know, those are a handful. Yeah, that's awesome. Either one of those things would be the great base of a movie, and very quickly, uh, the tour with Baby Metal coming up looks like it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be special. It's uh, different. Uh, I see it as a. First and foremost, you know, a great opportunity to hopefully, I feel like they probably skew slightly younger than yeah. we do overall. And we, you know, we always want to get the opportunity to show ourselves to, we don't think in terms of demographic when we do sure. what we do, aside from ourselves. Yeah. So that's why we want to try to play a bit for everyone. So with Baby Metal, I see we're going to capture a bit of a younger audience and also uh, uh, men with greasy hair and uh, trench coats. I'd be in the second group. <laughs> so we're going to get a lot of those. Uh, I think they're really cool. Yeah. I think it was one of those things when I hit the scene where because they are what they are, you know, like how, how they were formed and stuff. It's not your typical Scandinavian death metal uh, backstory. Theatrical, yeah. You know, so but at the same time, I remember the first time the, the one I saw was called Gimme Chocolate, right? The one that went viral first and first went, yeah. But no. But actually, yeah, why not? What? Why not? Yeah, fuck it. It's yeah. right and wrong in so many ways yeah. at the same time. Yeah. But it's a great show, and we saw them live uh, 
on a festival in the United States at yeah. some point somewhere. And they've played here too. They played in Columbus before. Yeah. I don't maybe think you were here that year. No, but. I don't think it was here, but it was probably that year. Yeah. Uh, and it was, you know, and we were there and we were, you know, you can say what you want, but I was blown away. Yeah. I've seen a lot of bands. I've, seen, I've been to a lot of shows of bands of different sizes and uh, seen, yeah, so many amazing things in multiple genres. And um, so it takes a bit to impress me and I was blown away. Your musicianship, the showmanship that is going on there, and um, delightful when something is different, you know. So I enjoyed a lot. So it's gonna be fun, it's, and it's gonna be. I like the opportunity of doing something different. We're gonna be the, who we are, you know, and it's just interesting to put us in different contexts. Well, I look forward to seeing it. As always, you're a fascinating human being. I'm always, always glad to talk to you. Man. Thank you, Johanna Sekerstrom, backstage from Hello. the Sonic Temple Festival in Columbus, Ohio.